Hi, uh, welcome to the Honest Technologies channel. I'm here with our two IT technicians, Hunter Ford. How's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good. And Zach Ball. How you doing? Good. Thanks for sitting down with me today. I'm sitting in for Donnie, so uh, hope you don't miss him too much. Um, so today we're going to talk about antivirus, clean up some misconceptions, talking about how it works and um, what solutions work for small business. So let's kind of start off just by um, describing how antivirus works and what it is and why we're talking about it. Well, antivirus is specific software stopped, uh, meant to stop anything malicious attacking your system, uh, Macs, uh, Windows. Um, there's all kinds of different flavors of antivirus, uh, malware, firewalls, all that kind of stuff. But it's really specifically to get rid of anything that's not supposed to be there that's been flagged. Antivirus, for the most part, picks up a lot of the kind of like your Trojans, your worms, your things that it, like, I guess it's a little more specific, like the kind of uh, things it's looking for to kind of stop. And it's usually stopping things that are already on your system or have made it their way onto your system. And then how do they kind of get onto your system? Is it just from web browsing and clicking the wrong links or downloading the wrong file? Email attachments yeah. tend to be the big one. Um, depending on what sites you go to, you can pick up tracking cookies, Trojans. Okay. So what are the kind of misconceptions people have of antivirus? Uh, well, one of the biggest ones is people just assume that it's managing itself and they don't have to do anything. That's wrong. You like have to so check. Make sure your antivirus is updating and it's scanning. Mm -hmm. um, the other big misconception is that Macs don't need antivirus. Uh, I recently came across an article where Max infections are actually doubling. Really? That versus Windows. That's kind of concerning because Macs for years and years were supposed to be, you know, not Windows, so they were never supposed to get infections and this kind of thing, but that just kind of shows how far Windows 10 has come with yeah. Windows Defender, um, all the extra features that Windows 10 has now. I guess it makes sense that they would eventually figure out how to exploit the Macs because people are so lax on security because yes. of the misconception. Yeah. They assume that the with how Macs are a little more locked down with what you can do, like installation-wise and uh, I guess like customization even, to where they just rely on that to just keep them safe. So we touched on Windows Defender. How does that stack up compared to like an aftermarket third-party software like Norton's and... Feed. Windows Defender has kind of come into its own where it's a very good antivirus solution. Uh, wh while I'll say it's very good, I think it's good to have a third-party solution for more malware sort of things, for more current threats that are uh, being created like today, like uh, malware bytes. You can get it for free and you have to run the scan or you can schedule the scans to run, but it's a good like secondary to Windows Defender. Exactly. It's kind of, your take on it's kind of hard Defender. because we've always approached it from a business sense, like Norton and McAfee for years were not good products, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not good products at all. You had to pay for them. You had to pay a premium for them. Um, so Windows Defender is very good. It's good and built in, um, but when we look at a business environment, we're Viper resellers, so mm -hmm. the difference there is Viper will tell us when you get a when you get an infection. So mm -hmm. we get an email. We set up the system to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Now, on the home front, people like I said, people assume their antivirus is running. The weakest link is always the person behind the computer because sure. they don't double check that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but no, Windows Hunter's very right. Uh, Windows Defender has come a long way, and it does catch a lot of things. But it's always good to have another software package to complement. Windows Defender. Okay. So. so when it comes to antivirus, less isn't really more. <laughs> yeah, you want to be safe. Yes. Okay, so we're touching on business then, so let's kind of get into those business solutions. So for a small office, less than 10 computers, what do you recommend systems that they can look into? I would say, like Zach mentioned, Viper, that's what we have. It's very, you know, you can purchase based on how many licenses you need. You install it, you set it up, you can set it up so it automatically, if it finds something, it'll email and it'll tell you what corrective action it has taken. Okay. And then you're able to go in and see the threat and do what you need to do, basically. Yeah, so the other thing to consider in that, when we, when we go up the chain, so like 10 computers, so uh, we have a client here in, in Bradford that doesn't have a server. So you can do cloud-based antivirus. Mm -hmm. That's actually become a big one because that offloads the resources off the server because 
you know, what can you accomplish mm -hmm. out the internet? Not a whole lot. So it's just a cloud-based antivirus. You install the agent, downloads the updates, and then we apply the policies from the cloud. Um, now, we do have some larger clients that have um, probably 30 to 50 in-house uh, will install um, the antivirus agent on the server and then manage it internally. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really all depends on what the client has. Mm -hmm. So there's flexibility. There's, there's flexibility more than there used to be good. because the cloud has evolved to the point where it's at now where we can get good applications. Mm -hmm. It used to be all just internally hosted, unfortunately, or they were standalone solutions. Just really depending on what the client needs. Um, mm -hmm. But we're a Viper reseller, but we can accommodate you know, to whatever the client wants, whatever the customer wants. Viper does support Mac. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what you're running, you should have some kind of antivirus. Um, but yes, we recommend even on the Mac side. Uh, we have several clients that run Macs, very Mac-oriented people, mm -hmm. graphic design and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have um, Viper installed on their clients, their mm -hmm. client machines. So is there any universal antivirus? It's kind of almost similar to when we talked about redundancy with uh, backups. You kind of want to have multiple things watching your back when it comes to like your um, antivirus solutions and your anti-malware solutions. I don't think any one thing will catch everything. Mm -hmm. You want an antivirus solution and then you want uh, con like a constantly updating anti-malware solution that's constantly looking for new threats, day one threats, stuff like that to make sure even the newest sort of viruses and malware that are coming, you're prepared for it. The ransomware has been evolving so quickly mm -hmm. that yeah. people are, the, the providers of the software are struggling to keep up with it, unfortunately. Um, but having multiple layers, um, firewalls, antivirus, anti-malware, I mean like malware bytes, for instance, mm -hmm. but people usually only run that after they find something. So, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, yeah. they're not running it proactively. So That's kind of the theme that we have yeah. in these videos, it seems, is like being proactive and not waiting yes. until it's too late to mm -hmm. get this stuff implemented. So we've thrown around some antivirus uh, terms, firewalls, anti-malware. Is it worth getting into what the differences are? And so antivirus and anti-malware are very similar. Uh, a virus is malware, but malware is a little more complicated than just viruses. Where uh, Antivirus is a little more of a sweeping term and it's more like they're already um, established, sort of. There's a lot of different viruses out there. Your antivirus will basically has all the information about all of them and will catch all of these threats, like new and old. Uh, but then malware is a constantly updated sort of protection where it's dealing with like new threats, like ransomware and stuff. Once, so once someone gets hit and then they figure out how it works, they can get the protection out to you with like an update or something okay. it's usually you could see updates with anti-malware software you know every day a lot of the a lot of the newer stuff a lot of what we deal with is is malware not necessarily viruses anymore like yeah. trojans mm -hmm. like um he was saying malware is kind of an umbrella term so ransomware adware spyware sure. um that's mostly what we deal with you know the old school definition of virus <laughs> Um, we don't really have a whole lot of that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've really gotten anything like that in a while. Uh, but we do occasionally get a Trojan. But that's... And then your antivirus just picks it up and just gets quarantines it. it. Yep. And how does a firewall... That sounds like a very dramatic thing. <laughs> so a firewall works in that its job is to stop incoming malicious data before it can even get to your device. Mm -hmm. It's usually something you set up on a server in a router where it has rules in place to stop malicious uh, data packets, basically. Where then antivirus and anti-malware, they go into effect when something's already made its way under your computer and it needs to quarantine it or stop it from basically running itself. I see. So it's literally layers of defenses. Yes, you have from... multiple layers of defense yes. to keep, basically to keep those, uh, those packets that are malicious from getting all the way to your, your computer running and then doing something with your software, your data, or anything like that. So if all else fails and something does slip into your computer and you get this red alert that says, like, infection, virus, attack, 
What's the first thing somebody should do? Disconnect from the internet. Disconnect. Um, one of the one of the big ones that people see is like the tabs in mm -hmm. Chrome. It, it's it'll like, just open a million tabs, and it'll just keep saying you're infected with a virus. Well, you, usually you aren't, but if you click on something in that window, you might get one. Is sort of how that works. Or just so that's like fishing. Push, push, yeah. Push the power button to shut it down. Yeah. That's a lot of people fall for that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't blame them. So you get that alert, hands off the mouse. Just get it turned <laughs> off. Yeah. yeah. Turn turn it off. That's the easiest thing to do. Okay. And if it comes back after you've rebooted, you probably have something. And you need to run if you have uh, malware protection, like malware bytes or something. Run it, see if it detects it. If it doesn't, you might have to see about getting an update for your malware bytes or another piece of software and try running it. If it's something brand new, you might have to almost wait for an update for your malware solution. Okay. But that's very rare. It's, you know, protection gets put out there pretty quickly, like updates and everything. So okay. for most things that affect your computer, there's a solution for it. Yeah. I think that about covers our antivirus topic. Uh, you can check out our other videos on ransomware and um, disaster recovery on our channel. Make sure you subscribe. We're putting out new videos every week over at Omnis. Hunter and Zach, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next time.